Yeah, good morning, everyone. Nice. It's another, it's another, it's another time for a monthly webinar. And today I have with me Dr. Oladi Pupo Olaide, the chairman of AG PMPN or your state. Um, so today's topic we'll be talking about changing trends in private healthcare delivery and then positioning. So in, with, without without much ado, I want to welcome Dr. Olaide. You're welcome, sir, Dr. Oladi Pupo. Nice, yeah, nice thank having you. Very you. Much. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogunoriki. And thank you for inviting me to deliver this topic. Exactly. We are we are privileged and honored to have you in the house today. Okay. Um, so we'll go straight to the topic for today. But let me just welcome everybody that are already joined us while we await others to join us for the webinar. I can see Ola, I can see Mary, peace. I can see um, James. Okay, I think we can just start while we wait for other people to join us. So, um, the floor is yours now, sir, Doctor Ladugupo. Let's have your session. Let's have you talk yeah. about changing trends in private yeah. healthcare Thank delivery. You okay. Very much. And uh, today's topic is yeah, based on trends in private care delivery and position. Um, of course, I'm Dr. Oladi Pupo, OM, the chairman of Association of Healthcare Branch. To start with, trend of health, as we all know, health is a complete state of physical, social, and psychological well-being not a mere absence of disease or infirmity. What that simply means is that you have to be completely all right, that you are not having a disease condition physically. It doesn't mean that you are early. Somebody that's emotionally disturbed is also not in the best state of health. And somebody that is also Psychologically disturbed or socially disturbed, if there is an unrest in the whole community, of course, uh, the members are in this. Healthcare delivery describes the relation of the to the citizens. And when we say it has to be qualified, appropriate, Situation varies from country to another. At the end of the day, why we use the word appropriate is that what is appropriate here may not be appropriate somewhere else. It has to be adapted. For example, to talk in our environment where the technology is not as advanced as other countries. We have to improvise certain things, but at the end of the day, you achieve what you want to achieve. The basic things about healthcare delivery accessible, must be available, must be affordable. And when we say must be accessible, everybody in the community should have access to it. And of course, it needs to be available before you won't have access to it. And if it's available and accessible, but not affordable, then it's not it's not it's not a qualitative one. And so it has to be affordable. Let's move the slide up a bit so that we can see. Okay, it's all right. 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 Down. Go down. Previous slide. Previous slide. Previous slide, yeah. And so, uh, oh yeah, next one. Okay, sorry, sorry. So, and it has to be equitable. Equitable in that what Mr. He needs 
is what you will give Mr. B. What Mr. B needs is what you will give Mr. B. For example, children needs immunization. We have childhood immunization diseases and they are so. so. So there are some things that we need in childhood immunization scheme. So which may not be needed in an adult. In other words, that one has to be, excuse me, please. I want to switch out the phone. So, so and it has to be appropriate, appropriate health technology. It has to be appropriate. It has to be. It has to be appropriate. What is appropriate for children may not be one that is appropriate for adults. You cannot be talking in terms of cancer screening for children. You can't be talking in terms of cancer. So, it has, the qualitative health has to be accessible, available, affordable, equitable, and appropriate. Next slide. Next slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Qualitative healthcare delivery must have the above listed conditions. In addition to health services being delivered within appropriate and reasonable time. That is, we have advocate reduced waiting time. In those days, and it has to be without compromising the quality of care. In those days, people will go to hospital. In fact, it's a, it's a day job. Once you are sick and you want to go to hospital, you have to go very early in the morning and will not come back until later in the day. That's what, what it used to be. But now, for part of qualitative health care, we must take into consideration, into consideration appropriate waiting time, which must be acceptable. You should go to hospital, registration and everything should be within one hour, maybe 40, 45 minutes. Old paradigm in private health care delivery. Private health services were usually, in those days, were usually owned by unqualified people, such as hospital attendants, auxiliary nurses, Two, we call them community health extension workers. These are the people that will establish private hospitals in those days. Those hospitals are usually located in unconducive environments where environmental hygiene is not paramount to even the owners of the hospital. They are purely unqualified staff using unsterilized equipment and such hospitals such hospitals are usually not registered by government. They do it underground. And of course, the category of people that attend to this, they are still members of this community, but they are people that, are, that belong to low socioeconomic class. That is what we used to have. Later, we move to private health facilities being run by qualified health personnel. But they are usually located for the government will not even be able to catch them. And uh, apart from the owner of the hospital, who is qualified, others, the other workers that is using, by unqualified people. It's qualified. It goes beyond this boundary. And that's what I mean by it's all in home. He's a surgeon, he's a obstetrician, he's the one we've seen, and they handle cases that goes beyond their boundary. He does substandard practices. Facilities are not usually registered. He runs such practice on part time basis and has consultation hours. Usually, these are Qualified doctors, they have, they work with government sector or they have, they work with other hospitals. So they usually run such <clears throat> practice on part time basis. 
And once it's outside the house, the consultation period, period. Mm -hmm. staff and usually auxiliary nurses. Sometimes they employ even a male auxiliary nurses that will have to save with a doctor. Next slide. Next slide. It's on, it's on. Yeah, levels of healthcare. Of course, in Nigeria and all over the world, there are three levels of healthcare. The private health sector provides health services for about 70% 70 of the populace. And this is due to the fact that there is almost complete failure of public health system. And the are three levels of care. We have the primary, secondary, and tertiary level. The primary level of care, these are health posts, dispensaries, health centers, and these are usually handled at the level of local government and are supposed to cater for majority of health conditions. And these health conditions are the simple and uncomplicated ones. Next, next slide. The next one we move to is secondary level. Secondary level, these are the levels of general hospital and comprehensive health care centers. They are usually uh, owned by state government and they handle secondary care cases, not, not very complex cases. I mean, to, to doctors, not really very complex, but they are above, far above the primary care level. Of course, in this kind of situation, they do things like uh, simple surgery or moderate size surgery, like cesarean section, aneurysm, um, abdominal surgery, like ectopic pregnancy, and things like that. The last level is tertiary level, which is usually, which handles very complex cases, and is also for teaching and research purposes. Complex cases like uh, treatment of cancer, renal transplant, uh, complicated heart conditions, kidney conditions, and things like that. So primary and secondary levels of care. Primary and secondary levels have almost collapsed or almost non-existent, which means the bulk of the workload is now handled at tertiary institutions, which now means the tertiary institutions which makes it difficult for them to effectively discharge the duties of taking care of a huge number of patients in addition to doing their teaching and research purposes. But don't forget that I said the tertiary level, apart from handling complex issues, they are also there to handle uh, researches and training. So this one would now lead to, on the level of uh, tertiary, there will now be poor service delivery poor service delivery, long waiting time. And don't forget that I said part of quality to get the, the, the waiting time has to be less than one now. Of course, that must be good. What we're now left with is poor customer satisfaction because people have to wait a long time. They treat them. There are no good public relations. So public hospitals find it difficult to catch up with the modern trend because of poor financing. Of course, we know that uh, this is a resource environment. So we do it really in our economy, there's poor financing of the so-called tertiary institutions just uh, we have impressed you and couple with corruption in our society. Private health facilities are supposed to take care of, traditionally, private health are supposed to take care of primary care cases. But because of the situation we find ourselves due to failure of primary and secondary level of care and poor performance of tertiary care, there is now need for private hospitals to reposition itself for the care at all levels. Next slide. 
Next slide. Private test, private test. Hello? Okay. I think the internet at the end of Dr. Ladibo has, has hung a bit. I was talking about private sector just before that happened. Okay, while we wait for him to come back on. Wait for him to come back on. Uh, just take, um, talk briefly about. I mean, about all that we are, he has been talking about prior to prior to the glitch and the internet. So the topic again for today, topic we have for for to, uh, for today is um, is on technology, the use of technology, and hold on a minute, changing trends in private healthcare delivery and positioning. And when we have Dr. Lade Pupo Laide, the chairman of AGPMP, taking on, on this topic. So while I I wait for for him to come up, he has talked about health, definition of health, talked about the state of health, talked about delivery, the healthcare delivery on the services available, making services accessible to people available for them, affordable to them, equitable, and also appropriate. Yeah. You also spend some time talking about the healthcare facilities and the people that are involved in this delivery. Unqualified people like the Jews, of the nurses, and the location of the hospitals too. It's always been a concern with respect to the environment. And moving forward, he also talked about the the recent move, the recent trend in the in, in delivery of service, the time involved in delivery of healthcare service and uh, healthcare facilities now being run by or uh, at the hold not it's still it's still for the hold regime. May run by qualified health uh, health personnel. Next slide. Um, okay, now the level talked about the level of healthcare, the primary health, the secondary, and then the tertiary. Okay, but while that is ongoing, we stopped. We stopped. Okay, I think it's back home. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry for the network problem. I'm back now. So we are on the new trend. New. Oh yeah. Slide to the new trend. Next one. Okay, it's all right. right. Private sector participation in healthcare delivery has therefore raised the level of healthcare in the country. Like I said, because of the failure of the private, the primary and secondary sector of care, and uh, as well as tertiary level. The private sector has found itself, the private sector that is traditionally supposed to take care of primary level cases, has found itself bracing hope to handle primary, secondary, and tertiary cases. The reason being that, and don't forget that I said okay. the level. 
private sector. Can you hear me now? Okay, let me just continue from here. I guess the internet has affected two of them from their from their hand. He's working on it. Okay. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me? Can I continue? Yeah, doctor, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Right. Thank you. So, on, para on, on paradigm, sh paradigm shift, we're talking about private sector participation in healthcare delivery and how it has raised the level of healthcare in the country as evidenced by the federal government, extending public and private partnership for healthcare delivery. And, and truly, I think these are actually actual, uh, really improved healthcare delivery participation of private sector. And, and there are PPP laboratories in some, that's private and uh, public uh, private partnership uh, where we now have up to date or standard laboratories in some of the teaching hospitals, and these are actually uh, doing well. There are other collaborations as well. It's all right. Can I continue yeah. now? Thank other you. collaborations with private health institutions. Okay, are you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Thank you very much. For Hello, Dr. Light. Light there. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You can see that the private health sector has to bristle. Can you hear me? Can you hear now? Hello, Doctor. We can hear you, sir. Okay, it's all right. Hello. I think audience should be able to hear you. I think it's just the HOS that cannot hear you. Okay, I yeah. cannot see this. Um, okay, so um, Hello. part of what we said is okay. Yeah. Yeah. The internet. The feedback I'm getting is that the doctor is back. So, yeah, um, are you back now? Allow him to continue. Can you hear me? Hello, Dr. Laide. Yeah, Doctor, yes, uh, yes, I, I think audience can. Oh. Okay, I think we have we are trying to sort out the internet at the end of Dr. Olaide, but while that is ongoing, I think let me just continue from west of let me try to come up with the slides. Oh, okay. Ola is saying that they can hear. Same for Mary. I can hear from my hand. Okay, I guess we can go ahead while I wait for Dr. Lady to join. Let me try to. A minute. Let me try to come up with this with the slides from my hand.
Hello? Hello, yeah, doctor. Okay, thank you. Hello, HTS gun. Yeah, can you hear now? Okay, while we wait for doctor, while we wait for doctor, allow yeah, you to, to come up, we can. Trying to load the screen, I'm trying to load the, the, the presentation back that will continue from where it stopped. I'm not enabled to share from share my screen because someone else is currently sharing the screen. So that's the current challenge I have with sharing the screen from my hand. Um, well, basically, while, while I wait, let me just talk briefly about, about us. My name is Aki Ogunweke. I'm the head of sales of RX Hub. So today's meeting is just um, a monthly webinar that is we hold the webinar monthly, which provides an opportunity to engage and talk with healthcare practitioners, basically um, all over Nigeria, as if I don't Lagos, as the case may be, majorly. Um, so we hold this every month, that last Saturday of the month. We come up with different topics where we engage, we uh, educate ourselves on on topics that are that we expect to be interesting to us with respect to our current practice and that's exactly what we what we do so today is the um, edition for the month of july i can so we have right here today dr lai so i get the slides are back up so we can take it up from where it stopped you can move to slide seven Okay. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I'll just pick it up from where Dr. Olai did stuff while we wait for, yeah, yeah. I'm wait for him. So, he, he, he was talking about the levels of health care. So, there are the issues that are related to Mr. King. Levels talking about primary health care, secondary health, secondary level, and then the tertiary level. And there are major, majorly con, the major concerns with respect to health care delivery has always been about poor service delivery, long waiting period, poor customer service, public hospitals sometimes find it difficult to catch up with modern trend because of um, poor financing. And then private health facilities are supposed to take care of primary care cases. Primary care cases, but due to failure of primary and second secondary level of care and poor performance from uh, hold on a minute, and Dr. Lady is actually home. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, Doc.
हेलो कैन यू हियर मी यस ए डॉक्टर यस कैन यू हियर मी डॉक्टर आई कैन हियर यू क्लियरली ओके ओके इट्स ऑलराइट इट्स ऑलराइट लेट्स कंटिन्यू या सो एज आई वाज सेइंग एज अ बिकॉज़ ऑफ द फेलियर ऑफ प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी ओके सर टर्शियरी केयर the private hospitals are to come in to brace up and private sector participation in health okay. as for as they have for raise the level of primary care in the country don't forget that i said the primary care are supposed to be taking care of primary cases but because of the failure of various levels of care there's no need for private sector to respond it say and take up and brace up so because of that private health sector we are now seriously participating in healthcare delivery and as evidence by federal government extending the public private partnership delivery for example participation of private health sector in health insurance you can see that majority of our people the big private health facilities because they decide that uh, of course proximity to their house reduce waiting time and uh, the bureaucracy is less other areas where private sector are coming is of course in in the area of pharmacy and the area of okay okay can no one no one Okay. We can hear you. We can hear you, doctor. Areas, Continue, sir. Okay. Other areas where private hospitals, private health facilities have come in. Of course, in the area of, you can see there are some teaching hospitals that are running PPP for pharmacy and as well as laboratory, and these areas are doing well. Other areas by which um, private sectors have come in. in healthcare delivery is even the mortuary laundry and even security services um now coming to health private healthcare facilities we now discover that how do we reposition ourselves to meet the modern trend of course we have to start with even the positioning the location of the hospital private health sectors now start with the location looking for very good and conducive location for their business usually the facility is usually purpose built or proper or the one that is rented or it will be properly adapted for the purpose of healthcare delivery or like in those days where people will just be sharing the same building where people are living or being used for another business i just see people having one bedroom and um, three bedroom apartment or room and the fellow because of the challenges we are facing now that we have to reposition ourselves right but we now say okay you need have to register with government agency the private hospital will have to register with government agency will have to register with corporate affairs commission and during the registration such health facilities must meet necessary conditions necessary condition and pay necessary and statutory levies and uh, the vision and mission of the facilities must be clearly stated the target of most health facilities is to incorporate facilities services that will be necessary for proper discharge of their core activities and you now move to staff recruitment and training recruitment of qualified staff with necessary experience and that are ready for continuous retraining or professional development and of course they have to be proficient in number the staff must register with their professional body so it is no more the function of using on qualified people you now need to you now have need to recruit qualified staff that have necessary or requisite experience and qualification and of course you have to continuously be retraining them and they must 
have provisional, they must be ready to accept provisional development. They must be sufficient in number and they have to register with their provisional bodies. Not only that, they must be computer literate and the staff must be trained, properly trained in good public relations. What we have in public services is they do not have manners. Their public relations is almost zero. But the ones we are using in private sector now, you must be, they must be ready to comply with these of our professional regulations. And customer, you must realize that customer as someone you blast will insult the client anyhow so which is different from what we now have organizations are now departmentalized into medical laboratory nursing departments admin and account pharmacy medical record and it and each department must have its own head. Organogram must, be, organogram must be drawn, indicating the flow of authority and their duty specification. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, and in that case, it must have, it must indicate their duty specification. Different committees must be formed. The different committees must be quality management committee because you must make sure that as you are discharging your duties, you must make sure that the quality is being maintained. So you must have quality management committee, customers feedback slash complaints committee, because don't forget I said the aim is customer satisfaction. And as you are discharging your services, you want to make sure that the quality is maintained. You want to make sure that Infection prevention, infection prevention and control is maintained. So you set up infection prevention control committee. Of course, management committee, which will annex all these, the findings of all these committee and to make sure that things go on. There should be regular meetings of the committee and also committee of HOD, which will form probably management committee. There should also be general staff meeting, which can be done four to six times a year. And don't forget that the other committees that we are talking in terms of the above committee, they must be meeting probably once a month. In order to, to, to improve the quality of services being delivered, there must be, what we now do these days is we now have WhatsApp group, various WhatsApp group, formation of WhatsApp group. And this WhatsApp group could be there could be general WhatsApp group for the hospital, all the hospital staff, where necessary information can be passed to all staff. There can also be departmental WhatsApp group, or those committees can form their own WhatsApp group too. Different departmental WhatsApp groups, such as doctors' WhatsApp group, all the doctors in the establishment can have WhatsApp group. The nurses can have their own WhatsApp group. Laboratory can have their own WhatsApp group. Pharmacy can have their own, admin can have a WhatsApp group, hospital and patient WhatsApp group. And even there are some special WhatsApp group. Like HIV and his group. And there can also be interdepartmental WhatsApp group. So you now talk in terms of quality of care. Emphasis must be placed on quality of care and customer satisfaction. Quality of care can be technical or functional. Technical quality of care, of course, it has to do with the technicality of your profession. Technicality of health organization will mean you must employ qualified staff. The staff, no matter how qualified they have, they must be adequate in number. And you must pro there must be provision of equipment, what they are going to use. The, you, then you must talk in terms of delivery of healthcare service. What are the health services we are delivering? Is it uh, immunization, healthcare delivery, um, um, <coughs> uh, maternity services, child welfare, surgery, dental, 
and all sorts, then you must make sure that the quality of drug procurement, because at the end of the day, whatever you are giving, it must be of good quality. And there must be proper storage, storage facility for drugs and equipment must be proper. In that case, if you the things that are supposed to be refrigerated, they have to be refrigerated. So talking in terms of functional quality of care, functional quality of care, of course, we talk in terms of infrastructure and interior decoration. The place must be attractive and appealing to staff. Your staff are to customers. Your staff must be well-dressed. There must be dressing code, not just putting anything you, they like on. And accessibility to the facility. What is the road leading to that place? Other things that will improve customer satisfaction and therefore quality of care is, of course, apart from the fact that service must be present 24 hours, there must be presence of water 24 hours. Not people going to fetch water, not people using the uh, um, draw to draw water from well. There must they must be able to open their tap and water will flow. There must be 24 hour supply of electricity. There must be next slide. Yeah. Security of staff and patients, including security of their vehicles. When you admit patients on bed, they must park their car, or when they come to access care, they must park their vehicles in a place that they think is safe. There must be communication facilities within the hospital, whereby from one department to other, or from the patient without leaving his room. There must be intercom. And when you are admitting such patients, you must tell them the Now, this is the nurse's reception. And, and so there must also be closeness of the convenience to the patient. Of course, part of the things you provide, provision of decent television and cable network. These days, you use, you use plasma television and of course, of course, there must be net, uh, cable network where they can watch different stations. There, minutes, minutes. Okay, there are other ancillary services that must be provided. The security. The services can increase customer satisfaction. You can move to the next slide. Where are we write? Okay, see, okay, sorry. And these are kitchen services. There must be variety stores. Even as simple as selling of recharge card must be there. We know that people can buy cards online now. But before this time, part of what we should provide there is uh, selling of recharge card. Provision of plasma TV, relevant educative program during antenatal care immunization and family planning clinic. All committees must be up and doing. Sanitation must, committee must make sure that the facility is neat. Infection prevention committee must make sure that the infection prevention and control are maintained. Then you move to staff. Of course, next slide. Qualified staff must be employed. Quality staff must be and the staff must register with their provisional bodies. There must be training of staff in public relations. They must show a lot of hustle. They must not be too talkative. They must be hardworking. And they must show empathy to the patients we are, we are taking care. So also, we move to staff welfare. These staff, they are the necessary, most important ingredients uh, of your organization and the staff must be well paid staff welfare you must give next slide staff you must give it uh staff welfare consideration the staff must be well paid condition of service must be attractive and you must give them maternity leave annual leave staff quarters and loan to staff without the loan without interest free treatment and their roster must be flexible 
the work environment must be conducive. You must have insurance for your patient. Professional indemnity insurance must be for staff. And there must be contributory pension scheme. Contributory pensions because the issue with private sector is that staff usually have the feeling that once they leave the place, no pension, no gratuity. But thank God government has created contributory pension scheme. So private health facilities must key into contributory pension scheme. Staff must pay tax as at when due, and there must be provision of crutch for nursing mothers. And so that this one will encourage them to make sure that they come to your place. Presence of good amenities coupled with good presence of good amenities coupled with good infrastructure and conducive environment make private health facilities attractive to health management organizations. And these are the people, these are the organizations that are involved in health insurance. There's also ease of accessing care in most private facilities. Of course, we now have ICT. Of course, that's the key thing now. The health facilities must key into ICT. The services must be seamless and almost paperless with good backup, external backup. Staff must be trained and they must be IT compliant. The facilities must have email, website, telephone, internet, internet facilities of COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic has taught us to be more serious with infection prevention and control. This will then be regular washing with soap and running water or use of alcohol-based sanitizer. Creation of isolation ward because the suspecting a case of COVID-19, you must first, there's what we call holding bay, where you put the patient and of course, you must put on your PPE, personal protective equipment, so things like use of hand gloves, face masks, go go operation. Private health sectors are now capitalizing on failure of the public sector. And if private health facilities are properly organized, it can be it can actually become better alternative to the For example, I think we have other sectors. Telecommunication, in telecommunication, of course, private sector is thriving, while public communication is almost dead. When you look at that, public schools, move to the next slide. Public schools are also dying, while private schools are thriving, innovative, and expanding. With, I, with ICT, face of our private practice has been from traditional solo practice to standard and best practice, best global practice, which is evidence-based. What you are saying here is, in those days, your practice is limited to your consulting room. You are alpha and homemaker, and whatever you do with your patient, nobody knows. Now, patients are now IT compliant. They Google, they go on the internet to know what is wrong with them, and to even Google their symptoms and what are the possible causes. So, the modern-day doctors, modern-day health facilities must be well equipped. Otherwise, you have a situation whereby your clients are even better informed than you as health practitioners. So, telemedicine is now the practice. You do not need to see cardiologists before interpreting ECG reading. You can have ECG in your office and send it to that cardiologist that is in America will study the ECG and give you the report. The same thing is applicable with orthopedic surgeon or radiologist. You have X-ray, your patient will have X-ray, they don't, and you send the X-ray to the orthopedic surgeon or radiologist, wherever it is, he interprets it. The same thing is applicable to plastic surgeons. Plastic surgeons, they assess your patient, they assess the wound without necessarily having contact with the patient or you having contact with the plastic surgeon. So there are a lot of things. A doctor in America or any part of the world can now direct you even during surgery. You can beam what you are doing and right down there, you can say move to the right, move to this one, you do this, you do this. You can now see that there is now collaboration among healthcare workers more than before. Information travel now travel faster 
and so exchange of ideas. Private sector, private sector now attend to primary, secondary, and tertiary medical conditions because some private facilities have been well equipped to handle such cases. For example, major surgeries and managers of cancer, renal dialysis involving renal transplants can now be done in private health sector. Private health facilities are now repositioning themselves in the new trend of healthcare delivery. Do not forget that private health facilities in India are better positioned than even public hospitals. Suddenly, India has become mecca to our people <laughs> in seeking health services. Uh, so with this, I really thank yes. you very much for giving me this opportunity to present this and I think with this, we are to be better collaboration among healthcare workers and private health facilities are now better equipped to position ourselves to meet the new trend. Thank you very much once again and thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the organizers for organizing this educative program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Oladubuko. We, 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 we are highly privileged to have you to pick a lot of points from there. So while, while we wait for questions, I think I just want to give this opportunity for questions at this point in time. If you have any question, you have any comment with respect to what Dr. Oladubuko has shared, you can just drop the question down there and start at the chat box so that I can pick it up from there. Um, while I wait for that, we have roughly five minutes more to to go. Um, briefly, we have heard about we have heard from Dr. Ola Dipopo. Um, from me, basically, uh, I represent Alexol, Alexol in, 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 in cooperation, and then today we are, uh, I just want to talk briefly about what we do and what we stand for too based on the topic we have heard today about recent trend in, in, in healthcare delivery, the changes in healthcare delivery uh, and positioning and, and, and staying, being uh, um, getting ourselves ready to, to match up with the changing trends in healthcare delivery. And, and we have some good solution that can actually assist in achieving this in the positioning for, for the future and providing all that is essential for for our patients. Um, we have different products, but I'll just talk briefly about one of the things we also offer with respect to having access to place your orders, order your products right at the convenience of, of your pharmacy, hospital, or even your, your home. Uh, we have a unique product called Alex Delivered. It's an online platform where you can order products and can get those products delivered to to your hospital or to your pharmacy, as the case may, may be. So that's just one service to provide. And to access this, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. All you need to do is just to go online, go on to www. Let me just drop that there. rxalldelivered.com and sign up. Once, once, you, once you sign up, you have access to, you have your login details. Is that you can either pay directly or you can also make um, have access to some level of credit. That's also one of the things we also offer for SMEs, private hospitals, um, SMEs that probably need some level of um, nothing to which will also help with the level of growth and, and keeping up with the trend that Dr. Ladipo just shared about having having the the facility set up rightly um the environment being conducive for the employees and even for the patients and all so that's that's one area we can also come in by ensuring that yes we have enough cash flow ensure that you meet up with the standard so we have that provision you can order your products online pay directly immediately or you can also access some level of credit once you are a registered uh, business, um, apart from apart from that, 
Okay, um, I think my slide has come up. As an SME, you can access up to 200,000 Naira monthly credit from us. We also provide for you competitive product pricing. Your, your price you get from us will be the best that you're going to get in the market. So that's also one of the major advantages that we, that we offer. Thirdly, I think I talked about, I've talked, I've talked about the convenient ordering of products. You can order it from home. Comfortable payment terms. And lastly, business intelligence and, 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 and analytics like best performing products. All these you can access from, from our side. Okay, uh, any question? I don't think I have any question for Dr. Lade Popo. Um, yeah, next slide shows that how does it work? No, please go back. Oh, go back. The fifth slide. The sixth slide. Okay, good. So, so that's how it works, basically. If you want to do the cash profit, you can just sign up on Eyes of Delivered. On the platform, you select the shops you want to buy from. You can place your order and also select time, preferred time of delivery. And once that is done, your products will be delivered to you after you make payment. So you can make payment through, through PayPal, Paystack, debit cards, or you can also make online transfers to our account. So if you also want to access some level of credit, we provide that to So you can also, you don't need to sign up on our platform, iSawDeliver.com, and you'll be contacted within 24 hours. At, that, at this point, you uh, you expect that you make some, submit some documents to confirm that you are licensed to practice in Nigeria for the year, and also that you, are able to meet up to some expectations we have. So from there, you can also do you know, the same process that we shared with the people that pay that pay cash for their service. Um, I can see now, but the slides need to be full. So I think that's old message. Okay. Yeah. I think our time is actually fully spent. But before I before we run out, some requirements to access credit, license to practice from MDC and that's for private hospitals. If it's a retail pharmacy, we expect that you drop the premise license and pharmacist license. Very, very essential for us before you can access you can have access to that two hundred thousand dollar monthly uh, fund for for you. A KYC form with your password photograph will be will be required of you as well. And lastly, national identification card. It may be national ID card, it may be national passport, it may be your driver's license. So that's basically all what we require of you before you access this platform. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for for your holding. Thank you for your time. We apologize for the glitch at that point in time when when the internet went off from the other hand. So um, let me appreciate everybody once, one by one. David, Dr. Babs, Lad, Mary Peace. Mary Peace stayed with us throughout. Ola also stayed with us throughout. Dr. Lad, is back. And if I didn't mention your name, thank you for joining us. So same time, another um, next next month next month session next month edition to hold on 29th of August. So you can mark your calendar 29th of August. Same time next month, we'll be having another awesome guest that will talk to us about another interesting topic. Thanks for today. Thanks for now. Stay blessed. See you another time.